She's a real woman with a real life. She's someone you can relate to. Dawn Newton. Newton podcast. I am your host, Don Newton. Joining me today is award-winning journalist and New York Times best-selling author. He's here to talk about his book, Ladies Who Punch, the explosive inside story of The View. Ramin Satuta had unprecedented access. He has some pretty stunning interviews with nearly every host, and he takes us readers backstage where the stars really spoke their minds. Hey, Ramin, how are you? Hi, Don. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. It's great to talk with you. Congratulations on the book. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. My first question, and I've been, ever since the book came out and watching your interviews and, and reading the book myself, the one thing I'm curious about is, you know, you are an award-winning journalist. You've you've written for and senior writer for Newsweek, Wall Street Journal, Los Angeles Times, U.S. News and World Report. And then here's this book, Ladies Who Punch, who some people say that, oh, this is more of a media book. How did you come to write this? Oh, thank you very much. So I never really saw this as a media book. I saw this as a book about um, it was it was a drama and a soap opera and a Shakespearean tale about control. And I saw the characters on the show because I'd been writing about The View and covering The View for many years as a journalist. I saw them almost as Shakespearean figures. And this was a very King Lear-like story with Barbara Walters retiring in 2014 and which of her daughters would inherit the throne. So it's kind of like Shakespeare and Game of Thrones and (laughs) soap opera all rolled into one. That is a perfect analogy. The way you sum that up is just is absolutely accurate. And um, the vision is right there. I mean, you can see it. You know, Barbara Walters launched The View, what, 1997, and then just reading through it, not realizing how many people were really after her seat, really wanted to take control, which really kind of surprised me that they would do that to Barbara, of all people. You know, just the the persona that Barbara has created, kind of the pedestal and, and the legacy of herself. It really surprised me to hear that. Right. She created the show 22 years ago in 1997. But it is surprising because everyone is, you know, you would think everyone would be so reverential to Barbara Walters. But it also isn't surprising because TV is a very cutthroat business and people are always looking for the next thing. Um, But Barbara created the show. By creating the show, I think she also ensured some longevity because – News anchors usually aren't on TV through their 80s. And as a result of The View, Barbara Walters was on television until very recently. And it gave her an entire new act in her career that no one really ever anticipated. And I know in in reading in our talking points, it took, what, three years to write the book. Was Was it a difficult time to write? Was that a pretty quick time considering all the personalities and getting people to agree to contribute to the book? It wasn't an it wasn't an easy book to write. It was a big journalistic project for me. And and it took a long time. I didn't think it was gonna would take as long as it did. But three it took three years for me to write the book. I interviewed more than 150 people for the book, including everyone from Barbara Walters to Rosie O'Donnell, Meredith Vieira, Star Jones, Jenny McCarthy, because I really wanted to take you inside the show. It was important for me to talk to almost everyone because I didn't think the book would work without having all their voices. And how was it? Was it very difficult to get them all to agree? It depends. It, de- it was on a case by case basis. It depended on who I was trying to get to agree. I think once I had, I interviewed 11 of the co-hosts for the book. Once I had, I think, more than five or six, it became easier because then it became, this is a big project and I really needed their voices to be part of it. Um, And also, I think just, you know, for the sake of accuracy, I would check things with them and run things by them and tell them what the other co-hosts had said. And I think that also helped because then they realized they wanted to be part of the story to tell their own story. And I know you had said in an interview, which I thought was hilarious, too, was it that the view itself, the way we see it today, how it gets (laughs) those arguments are real that we see on TV. But you said it mirrors like a Thanksgiving dinner. (laughs) which I thought was pretty funny. Why do you think we're so obsessed? Either we love it or hate The View. What what is that all about? But it's it's still going really strong. I think the reason why The View is successful is that it, in a lot of ways, predicted our current climate and our political climate. And it was like having Thanksgiving dinner with your family and having the members of your family that 
aren't going to get along with you and don't see eye to eye with you. And yet you're all at one table having these heated conversations about the news and politics. And it's the only place on daytime TV where you can get political information and you can be a stay at home mom and you can learn about George W. Bush's policies or you can learn about waterboarding or you can learn about what's going on inside the White House. So it's also a very smart show. Joy Behar likes to say it's the Mensa of daytime TV and it is. It's an intelligent show that has um, a smart audience. And in writing the book, Ramin, some of the stories, especially, you know, I've heard Jenny McCarthy talk about it, and she talked about it shortly after she left, too, what, what an experience it was for her. She said she's grateful for it, but it was a very, very difficult job for her to be doing. She didn't feel she could be herself and thought Barbara kind of had it out for her. How is it that it was such a tough time for some of the co-hosts to fit in? I mean, it either you were liked or you weren't, and it was difficult or you were pushed out. Is it is that just the definition, the epitome of, of the cutthroat of the business. I think so, but I also think the view is its own thing. A lot of the co-hosts compared it to Survivor. There were alliances and there were, you know, maneuvering backstage and you had to you had to on one hand be political and have strong points of view, but you also had to, you know, be liked by the audience. And so it's a very difficult it's one of the most difficult jobs I think in T V to be on that show and to be successful on that show and to do it in a way that you're happy with. Um, and Jenny did have a very difficult time. She told me it was her the, the worst job she ever had in show business was being on that show because she went in thinking this was going to be a fun thing. She could talk about pop culture. She could you know bring some joy to the show. And it was Barbara's last year. Barbara didn't want to retire. She took out a lot of her frustrations on Jenny. And Jenny didn't feel like she was able to have an identity on that show. And now that the book is out, everybody's read it. Um, everyone's talking about it. Rosie O'Donnell has shared her her disdain for you and for the book, saying that it wasn't, it was too negative and conflicted. And what has been some of the responses from some of the other participants, some of the hosts and co-hosts? But I don't think Rosie has actually read it. She's criticized the book, but I don't think she's actually read it. And I'd be curious to hear what she thinks if she did read the book. Um, there was something on Twitter the other day where she did retweet this nice thing that's in the book about how Rosie helped Sherry Shepard negotiate for more pay. Um, and she and it taught Sherry that she should help other women negotiate for their salaries as a result of Rosie. So she seemed to be happy with that. Um, for the most part, a lot of the co-hosts I've talked to feel that the book is fair and reflective of their experiences, which is what I wanted to do in telling this story. I really did want to have everyone's point of view in the book. And I did go through a very lengthy fact-checking process where I would run things by other co-hosts that were said about them to make sure everything was fair and they had a chance to respond. Well, that's just it is in reading the book and then just in, in what you did, you were very transparent. You let them know this is what's being said. Do you want to respond? So so you did do that work. So it's interesting to hear you say that you don't think Rosie has read the book, which I mean, I'm wondering how many other ones have or have not read the book and what their response has been. I've heard from some of the co-hosts. Some of them were private emails, so I don't want to sort of name them because I don't know if they wanted to be named. But sure. Jenny McCarthy had me on her show, and she was like, your book is exactly what the show is like. She was very um, – uh, her response was very favorable, and she was really wonderful about it. Um, and I've heard from other co-hosts, too, who feel like the book is fair. Was there any concern taking on a book like this and writing about this? I mean, because Hollywood networks, I mean, it can be so cutthroat. Did you ever have any concern for your own your own career and what this would do for you? No, because I think that um, I always set out to write a truthful book. And I think that in journalism, if you are truthful and you are seeking to tell people stories and to tell stories that haven't been told before, you'll be okay. And I know there is sort of this genre of celebrity journalism where you end up just praising the people you talk to and it's all, you know, positive, but th you know, this book has both. It has the positives and the negatives. And I don't think I would have been able to write a book about the view without talking about both sides and talking about what it was really like, because otherwise it would do a disservice to readers who are curious about the show. And Ramin, who do you want reading this book? I think this book um, is a really fun read for people who love the show, who love daytime TV, but also I've heard from people who have never seen the view, who also really have enjoyed the book because it is about entertainment and it is about women in entertainment and it is about politics and there's a lot of themes in the book that you know readers have responded to even if they've never seen the view and where do you see the show going just from your research what you've seen and, and knowing behind the scenes do you see the longevity for this or 
What do you anticipate? So Barbara Walters never thought the show would outlast her. She thought when she retired in 2014, the show would probably get canceled in the seasons ahead. And it almost did get canceled in the seasons ahead. It had a very difficult year with Rosie O'Donnell and Whoopi Goldberg fighting every day and having sort of issues about who would control the show. But I think that it's found its voice in the Trump administration and the Trump era because it is a place where you can go and you can watch the co-hosts debate all the things that are happening in the White House. And I think for the show to continue to, to succeed, it will have to find a new identity in the future and it will continue to need to find ways to be relevant because we're in a very specific political moment. And when this moment is over, I think it'll be interesting to see how the view adjusts. See who's still standing. Um, or if the Game of Thrones, <laughs> <laughs> if there are new characters involved, who knows? There's got to be a dragon flying in somewhere. I don't know. Something's got to show up. I just think that's hilarious, but it's so accurate. The book is Ladies Who Punch, the explosive inside story of The View. The author is Ramin Satuta. Where can we find the book and where can we learn more about you? The book is available in all bookstores. It's um, available on Amazon and at Barnes and Noble's bookstores. Um, you can learn more about me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is just my name, Ramin Satuta, and I also publish stories in Friday. Well, it's been a pleasure talking with you, Ramin. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Hey, thanks for listening to the Don Newton Podcast. Love talking with Ramin Satuta about his book, Ladies Who Punch, the explosive inside story of The View. If you want to follow Ramin, learn more about what he's up to, his work, you can follow him on Twitter, at Ramin Satuta. Be sure to visit my website, donnewton.org. The Don Newton Podcast is written, produced, and hosted by Don Newton. Don't